As the weather starts cooling down, the thoughts of Halloween start heating up. See Lancaster is working hard and they want to be sure the city of Lancaster is packed with fun-filled family activities. Hello, I'm Avery Martin. And I'm Zanala Walsh, their host for Sea Lancaster. On today's show, we're learning about the creepy booth fest activities in store for families in Lancaster. We'll also find out about the scarecrows that line Main Street each Halloween. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss this edition of Sea Lancaster. Their skeletons have low self-esteem. Why? Because they have nobody to love. <laughs> Why didn't the scarecrow eat dinner? Why? He was already stuffed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Grant, what you doing at the bus depot? I gotta go someplace where I can get everything I love. Incident with one gig speeds. A home security system. A whole home DVR with thousands of shows on demand. Wait. All those things that you love, I know people right here who can get you all of it. Internet, TV, security, and phone. Get it all with Compori, your friendly neighborhood tech giant. The Boo Fest is a fun family tradition right here in the city of Lancaster. People pack the streets to get a glimpse of the costumes, music, and candy. Here to tell us more is C. Lancaster's events and promotions manager, Lisa Roddy. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, the Boo Fest event this year, we're changing things up a little bit. We're going to do it at the American Legion, which um, I feel like that's a safe environment. It's kind of contained and we'll have security so families will feel safe about being down there. Um, and we're going to have rides and candies, games, everything you can think of for kids to come and play, like I said, in a safe environment. But this mm -hmm. year we're doing something a little bit different. We have added a haunted house. Uh, yeah, the uh, field house that the uh, baseball players use, we're going to convert it or in, into a uh, haunted house, and it's called Hillbilly Chainsaw Massacre. So the uh, community playhouse is doing that for us this year. So we're hoping that's going to draw a lot of attraction too, because we've never done that before. Yeah. And we'll have music and, and like I said, games for older kids, younger kids, and all of it's free. Everything free. It. Everything's, Everything's free. free. Mm -hmm. This is a, an event put on by the city, um, and the things that the city does are usually free. So luckily this year we were able to even do the haunted house and not have to charge for entry into it. So we're excited about all that. Is the food free? No. <laughs> it's not free. So the American Legion, because we're doing it at their field, they wanted an opportunity to get involved with us. So they're going to do barbecue. They're going to get a, a lot of uh, Boston Bucks and smoke them, and they're going to sell barbecue sandwiches, popcorn, and drinks. So they'll be separate from us, but they'll be at the same area. So, you know, if you don't get the opportunity to go home and eat or, you know, it's on a Saturday anyway. So if you get a, wanted to just take the opportunity to enjoy a longer time, at the event, you can eat at the American Legion and, you know, enjoy all the events. Okay. It's from 5 until 11. I mean, 10 o'clock that night. I'm sorry. Yeah. 5 until 10. They're convenient. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if you had to rate the haunted house on, like, a level of scariness, I guess, on, a, like, a scale of 1 to 10, how, like, what would it be? Well, um, I've talked with the staff, and we're going to, because we don't want to scare young children to yeah. they have so nightmares. There's no age limit. Okay. okay. So what we're going to do is, depending on the group going through, is to the level of scaredness. So if we have a bunch of, you know, high school seniors going through, 
you better be ready. Oh. But if we got first graders, you know, we don't want them to go home with nightmares. So we don't want them to be scared to death of chainsaws. So I know they're going to have chainsaws and things like that. So like I said, it'll be age appropriate depending on the group going through. We'll, we'll have everybody's not going to be able to walk through it one time. We'll have groups going through. So we'll try to, you know, put it to wherever. It's a very interesting way of doing yeah. things. Yeah, it's just an opportunity to everybody to get something out of it. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're trying to get scared, do not walk in like yeah. with a bunch of yeah, little, don't go with little, kids. <laughs> little kids. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. All right. It makes plenty of sense. Mm -hmm. well, could you uh, tell us about yourself and your role? Okay. Um, I'm and like I've started on August second, so I'm fairly new to this role in the city. In my history, I've um, worked a lot of um, events, done some events at the hospital. I uh, worked there for about twelve years, and I did the senior circle program that they used to have, and um, in doing that, we, I was planning events for seniors and also healthy women. We did those. So I've got a lot of experience with planning events, doing activities, getting involved in community things. I've served on the board of United Way and part of the Latch and have been on the uh, Health and Wellness Commission. So kind of been involved in a lot of different things, which helped me get to this role with the knowledge and the networking that I've done in the past to be able to, you know, meet different people and introduce different people and get them involved in some of the stuff that we got going on. Uh. Okay. Well, have you enjoyed the planning of the upcoming events? I sure do. I love planning. I love, you know, getting out there, getting people involved. You get excited when you, you can walk up with somebody and just have a conversation and then you come up with a whole new idea of something to do just by five minutes walking by somebody. Mm, okay. See, I want to be a planner. It seems planning. easy. Yeah, like wedding, you know, wedding, like events like that. Oh, yes. Like planning like that. Mm -hmm. you know? Planning is always fun. Oh, yeah. it is. Because you, you get to you, you Google and you look to see what other people are doing and you try to incorporate that in what you're doing, make everything a little bit different because you don't want to do the same thing all the time. Yeah. So you've always got to throw something new in there. Okay. Uh, how many people usually show up for the boot fest? Well, I'm planning for 5,000. Oh, yes, God. planning for five. That is a good bit of people. It's gonna be packed. Well, I'm gonna have rides, amusement rides. You know, anytime you have an event, you gotta have a Ferris wheel and carousel. So I'm having those. We're gonna have some inflatables um, for younger kids to play, and I'll have mm -hmm. rides for them. And then a uh, pumpkin carving contest. We'll have a stage set up some, with some different games and things going on. Um, did y'all host that fair? Like some no, months ago? that was oh, actually okay. the American Legion. They did that on their own. It was a opportunity to bring the fair I didn't realize this but the fair had not been here in five years yeah. oh. so they were excited about bringing it back and you know getting some things for the community to do yeah as it was it was it was pretty fun did I you went. go to the fair it was pretty fun I tried like to the rides was fun everything like yeah okay. it was pretty fun great great I tried to get it I couldn't get it I didn't have a cash <laughs> <laughs> um when and where will it be what time like when right. and where like, it's going to be at the American Legion and it start, it's Saturday, uh, October the 29th, mm -hmm. starts at 5, and we'll, we'll end at 10. Okay, all right. That's pretty close to Halloween. Yeah, yeah pretty. Very well, right. it, close. It, like I said, it's an opportunity for kids, young kids, older kids, adults, to come out in a safe environment, um, have fun, get some candy. Uh, I've already bought, you wouldn't believe the candy in my office. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are going to love the candy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Candy, yeah, every, candy will be everywhere. And I've got little prizes for the kids that play the games, we'll have toss the um, toss the ball and you know all the games that you do. Go fish, you know, and pop the balloons. Yeah. See, like I that. would take my niece and nephew, but they're a little too scary. They they too scary. They uh, they're too scary. They're they're the, like they're they're younger, so you okay. Know? How old are they? They're like like one is like five and one is like three. Okay, the five year old will have a ball. Uh, the ball. three year old may not under understand everything. Yeah. Prob maybe, you know, but they'll like yeah, knowing they can get candy and prizes. Kids love that. Oh, yeah. yeah, I'll take my cousin because I'd rather do that than take them trick-or-treating anyway. I'm just saying it's a it's a safe, nice environment. We'll have plenty of candy, plenty of games. Yeah. Lots of room down there. Parking, we'll park. Some people will be able to park in the front of the American Legion itself. And I've already um, made arrangements with some of the business owners in the area for us, you know, for them to allow us to have parking there. So... Okay. We hope to have ample parking for everybody. Okay. How many people come dress up for the event? You know, I don't know. Um, this is my first year to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of excited to see what goes on and who dresses up. And, 
you know, things like that. So I'm, I'm hoping we have a lot of people dress up. I haven't decided if I'm going to dress up yet or not, but um, I know that a lot of the uh, city staff are going to dress up and come. So, okay. If you if you had to dress up though, if you were going to for sure, what would you dress up as? Oh wow, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. I haven't thought about it. I, I guess I could go as a witch. Everybody can yeah, go as a witch, yeah. right? I think, I think I'm gonna be the bride of Chucky. The bride of Chucky, something like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't something, watch a lot of scary movies. I don't know. I have bad something scary, movies. like, but you know, not too scary. Yeah. You know, so. Do you have any uh, contests and prizes, or prizes for the contest? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, um, it's it's for kids again. Like I said, it's going to mm. be yeah. you know tailored towards them. So I've got like stuffed animals and candy oh, and things like that. Yeah. So you know, yeah, yeah, they'll they'll love that. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> Everybody loves a little stuffed bat, don't they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> stuff, I take one. A stuffed yeah. bear, anything. What kind of entertainment will be available? Uh, we'll have music. We um, and we're gonna have. They'll, they'll be the people that will be doing it. Will interact with the audience. They will, you know, try to get the audience involved with doing maybe some karaoke, maybe some sing along, maybe some trivia. You know, all different kind of things. Okay. <clears throat> How can businesses or churches get involved in this? Activity? Well. You know, I've had a couple of organizations approach me about having a booth or something there, mm -hmm. but I really don't think that's going to be the environment for that. And churches, yeah, I mean, the Civ uh, the Civitans have already approached me. They'll be there helping uh, with mm -hmm. games and stuff like that. But to set up a booth to advertise your product, I just don't think that's going to be the venue to do it because there's going to be so many games and the rides and the kids running around screaming, mm -hmm. playing. It's just probably not, a, you know, I mean, if yeah. anybody wants to come, I'm not going to tell them no, but it's probably not the best place to be able to talk about your brand and what you do. Yeah. There'll just be so much activities. Is that more geared toward, like, the Red Rose Festival? Yes, uh, yeah. the Red Rose Festival. And, again, I'm already planning it, so uh, when, when, those, when it's time to start having vendors come for that, I will definitely welcome those that want to have products or um in ideas that they want to advertise. That yeah. happened in May, right? Yes, it is May 19th and 20th next year. I got an honor at Rose Festivals. I don't ever miss one. I just like them. You know? yeah, yeah, it's a great Good opportunity. Food, yes. Everything. Just the smell, you know? Yeah, just, <laughs> I, mean, like, I mean, it's right on Main Street, so everybody just see it. Like, it's just exactly. Right there. Mm -hmm. And like with the um, Boo Fest, they're going to have popcorn. So when you have food cooking outside, it just kind of draws you. The, the cool air. Yeah. It's kind of just, it's just the whole environment's going to be great. Yeah, I agree. So what ages is this event like towards to? Like, all ages. All ages. Really tailored towards kids to give them the opportunity to get a lot of candy. That's what they want, you know, so they can take it home and the parents can hide it from them <laughs> mm -hmm. and then eat it. But, um. It's tailored really to all age groups, but it's a way to keep kids from having to walk the streets, you know, knock on doors. It just kind of helps with, you know, being able to enjoy Halloween and get to do all the things you want to do without having to walk the streets at night in the past, you know. Do you have any kids? Yes, I have two. Do they go trick-or-treating a lot? Well, my children are older. I'm oh. a little bit older, so my children are older and grown, but I have two grandchildren, mm. and they go trick-or-treating, and they love it. They Being think it's fabulous. Them? No, they live in Atlanta. My both of my children live in Atlanta, so I don't get to do it. Do you know if they tend to dress up as the same things like every year? I just... They do. <laughs> uh, uh, the kids love. Oh. My grandson loves the Marvel characters. I mean, it's Batman or Spider Man, and my granddaughter she loves uh, Minnie Mouse, of course, and all the little princesses with Disney. So, yeah, they kind of tend to tailor the same ways. I'm sure when they get older. They'll do different yeah. scary things. Different stuff. <laughs> I miss some days when I used to go to trick-or-treating. Oh, yeah. I just miss it. I, I remember going trick-or-treating in my neighborhood, but we had a safe, quiet, contained neighborhood. Nowadays, you know, the neighborhoods are either, they, and they're great with the smaller neighbors, but if you don't know all your neighbors, a lot of times people don't know your neighbors in the newer neighborhoods. So We're going to take a break, but up next, we'll get the scoop on all the scarecrows on Main Street, so stay tuned.
When is it bad look to be followed by a black cat? When? When you're a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> what do you call to which you share in an apartment? What? A broomstick. I'm Carter Osterhouse from HGTV, here with some tips on heating your home comfortably and responsibly, starting with your heating system. Even on the coldest days, nothing keeps your home warm and cozy like a high efficiency, Energy Star qualified natural gas furnace. You can actually feel how warm the air is, and that's because a gas furnace delivers air that's up to 25 degrees warmer than the air from a heat pump, and you'll have warmer air inside and cleaner air outside. Each year, see Lancaster holds a community-wide contest downtown to see who can decorate the best scarecrow. Once again, to tell us about this event is Lancaster Events and Promotion Manager, Lisa Roddy. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. What dates will the contest be held? Well, the contest starts on um, October 1st until the uh, winner will be announced on October 29th at the, C, like, at the Boo Fun Fest. What, what are Scarecrows on Main? Scarecrows on Main is an opportunity for the local businesses to get involved and, you know, do something fun and put their brand out there and, you know, get creative. Uh, we have 32 uh, light poles down Main Street starting at Main and Meeting to Chesterfield Avenue. And everybody gets, you know, they're assigned a different pole. So, you know, some of them do football players. Some of them have done, you know, uh, breast cancer awareness whatever they want to do, but this year's can, uh, theme is Candy Explosion. So I can't wait to see some of the things you come up with that. Yeah, so. I've seen all that stuff last year. Like, when I used to drive down Main Street, I used to always see, like, something on each pole. It, it, it gives you a reason to ride down Main Street and look at, at what it they're does. doing. They'll, they'll start going up on um, September the 25th until November 1st. They'll start putting them on the pole, so you'll start seeing them, you know, around that time. Can okay. anyone enter this event? Yes, anybody Anyone. can. Mm -hmm. It's mostly businesses because they yeah. get to, this is an opportunity to advertise your brand. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody likes free advertisement. <laughs> so what categories would a competition be like judged on? Well, it's going to be judged, number one, on a people's choice and most creative. And um, we'll have three spots, three places in the people's choice. How it's voted on is different businesses around town. I'm working on putting that together. I've got some of them that are going to participate that I take pumpkins and voting ballots to, and they'll be announced on our web page and our Facebook page of the location is that people can go to to vote. And you go and you vote which one's your favorite, which one's your second, which one's third, and which one you think is the most creative. And well, I'll, I'll gather those ballots and keep a running total. And again, like I said, it'll be announced at the Boo Fest. So if someone wins, do they get anything, or is it just like an announcement? Of? Well, it's the, you know, you're the winner of the you're prize. You're the winner, and, yeah, okay. It's a good opportunity to be, yeah. you know, last year's winner for the Scarecrows on Main, of course. get Facebook announcement, and, you know, it's just a really fun game for the community, for opportunity for everybody to do something together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. <clears throat> Were there any limitations on who can participate? Well, no, not really. Um, there's just limitations on... You know, again, my places that I have available at this time, I only have maybe five or seven spots left out of 32. So I'm excited about seeing all the creativity and everything that they're going to be doing with them, uh, with I'm some excited. of the different groups that are going to be doing it. I'm excited to see, too. I'm real like, excited to see how this going to look. Yeah. I know that every year Comporium has a, a really good one. They've won in the past, I think. Nutrimax mm -hmm. has a good one. They're, they're in it this year. And Main Street Hair Designs. They always have something creative because I can't wait to see what she does this year. It's all okay. it's all it's only September. Yeah, yeah. and like, we're doing all it the so spots. Early. Yeah, all the spots are <laughs> or most of the spots are already filled. Hey, listen, everybody wants the best spots. I mean, you want one on the corner. Oh yeah, that everybody has to yeah. stop at a stoplight and look at your uh, 
Scarecrow. Oh. Oh, yeah. When can contests begin decorating their scarecrows? Uh, they can start on September 25th, and they have to have them up by November 1st. I mean, October 1st. Okay. What are some of the rules for the contest? Well, first of all, it has to be able to stand the weather. Oh. And it has to be able to stay together. You will uh, zip tie it to one of the poles, so it needs mm -hmm. to be secure. Um, you don't want to use anything that rain or sun or wind is going to destroy and your stuff's running down the street. So it has to be secure and it just has to be able to withstand the weather. But if you're going to put that much time into something like that, you're going to make sure that it looks good because you want to win. Everybody yeah. wants to win. So if it's not secure, can they redo it? Like, can they come back in the contest or is it just over with? Like, oh, no. They, they have until the end of the, the 29th to come back and fix their scarecrows if, it, if they fall down, wind blows okay. them apart. I encourage people to come back and make sure it still looks good yeah. because I'll have some anonymous judges walking around and, you know, so you want to make sure it's going to look every day. You want to look good every day. Yeah. Could you like get kicked out of this thing? Like if you, like if your scarecrow doesn't meet certain things? Will well, it just... I don't know that that's ever happened, but we don't yeah. want anything grotesque or, or something that's going to, you know, offend somebody. Yeah. So we want it to be politically correct and, you know, non-offensive, of course. Um, was there any rules on what you can and cannot use in your uh, scarecrow? No, again, it just has to make sure it withstands the rain, wind, and the sun. Um, I would not suggest using paper or cardboard yeah. sometimes because, you know, once cardboard gets wet, it's soggy it's and up, it's yeah. gone. Yeah. So, How yeah. big should the scarecrow be? Well, you don't want it to be bigger than the pole, so you, I suggest like at least five or six feet <clears throat> so that it's, you know, you can see it from the road, mm -hmm. but it's not, you know, you want it to be big enough to be seen when okay. people are riding by so where are the scarecrows located on Main Street? At the poles. That we have light poles. Like I said, there's 32 of them, 16 on each side of the road. Probably more information you wanted to know about that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, they, they're, they're attached to the poles. Okay. They stand out? Yes. Okay, they stand out. So um, all the people in Lancaster can vote for yeah. scarecrows? Sure. So you said also you had a anonymous like judges, did yes. you say? What I have is like three judges who will walk up and down Main Street and they'll tell me their favorite, um, you know, they'll vote. And that, that's where the category of first, second, and third place comes in. Now the people's choice will be the amount of votes mm -hmm. that a certain scarecrow gets mm -hmm. at the polling locations that we have. Okay. What has been some of the spreadest scarecrows you have seen in the past? Some of the best ones, like I said, uh, Main Street uh, Hair Designs always has a, a good one. I know years ago they actually, um, put a sink and a chair and somebody was getting their hair washed. I just thought That's that was creative. That is. Yeah. And <laughs> one year, really creative. And one year, Comporium, they were promoting the, the, the SEC football channel. Mm -hmm. So they actually had a football player on a platform with a piece of um, turf, it looked like, throwing, getting ready to throw. So I thought that was great, too. That's great. So oh, you yeah. can get really creative, uh, you know, get a group of people together and somebody mentioned something and you go, oh, well, let's add this to it and this. And it's phenomenal. I can't wait to see them. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen them in a couple of years just because I haven't, yeah, I you know, looked either. at them. Right. Take a chance and walk down Main Street. They'll be up on October 1st. So take a chance, walk down Main Street, see what you think. All right. Okay. What are some uh, different categories people can enter their scarecrows into? Are there any different categories? Well, like I said, we're using the candy explosion thing this year. Mm -hmm. So I really want everybody to kind of go that way. So it'll be kid friendly and adult yeah. friendly. But I know they've used different themes in the past. Uh, some of them I can't remember, but you know, it depends on your theme. They're, you know, kind of tailor it that way. Okay, I love the way that's <laughs> So what is the hardest part about putting this contest together? Um, making sure you have enough participants, because initially when I sent it the it's information out in August, you know, nobody's thinking about Halloween, not really in August. They might going back to school. So when I sent it out, it trickled in kind of slow with the mm -hmm. applications with people who wanted a place. Um, so that's the hardest part is making sure you get it advertised enough, people know it. I've got it on our Facebook page, on our web page, and in the Lancaster News, I advertise with them. Starts okay. in August, these. Start, you, you have to start doing early. things <laughs> months yeah. early <laughs> before they actually yeah. So much earlier. Oh my God. Thank you, thank you for having me. And, Again, I just want to remind everybody that the Boo Fest is um, Saturday, October the 29th at the American Legion from mm -hmm. 5 o'clock till 10 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm.
Sounds great. Well, that's all the time we have left for today's show. If you have any comments or suggestions for our show, you can contact us at the address on the screen or email us at learn.tv at lcsd.k12.sc.us. Be sure to check out our Vimeo and YouTube page. Just search Learn TV Lancaster. For Zanilo Wells, I'm Avery Martin. Remember to get out and see Lancaster.